Alright, uh, welcome back. Um, I think I might have talked a bit too long on that one. I don't know. Uh, so let's definitely uh, just... This is definitely going to be a, a pretty easy one. Um, this is uh, definitely another obscure band. Uh, not too obscure, but they're definitely obscure when it comes to US power metal. But they were on a label that does get mentioned uh, quite a bit. This is Phantom with their debut album, uh, Dead or Alive, which was released through New Renaissance Records. Which New Renaissance Records were known for having a lot of thrash metal bands and speed metal bands, but also were known to have bands that would, you know, um, kind of be the precursors to death metal. So you had that, but here we have a U.S. power metal band that was on the label. But, so, uh, what did this band have to offer? Um, Am starts off with Dead or Alive. Uh, of course, uh, kind of starts off very atmospheric. You know what sounds and shit before it goes into the main riff, which is a right here fucking killer track. I really dig this. This is right here. You definitely hear that, but of course we do hear the the singing of Falcon Eddie and then the guitars of Neil C J Santel, who's a definitely a good guitar player as well. But there's something else in that's creeping in. We actually hear keyboards there's synths and which is odd and even though there has been keyboards into uh, power metal especially with the whole european scene especially even nowadays with bands such as dragon forest and the fucking symphonic power metal bands but here it's one of the earliest it's kind of mixing almost an aor feeling to it but at times it doesn't if anything, it reminds me at times even a bit of uh, Thin Lizzy's Thunder and Lightning with how that was. And there is like a, t a k uh, synth solo on here that actually isn't too bad. It's definitely fits uh, nicely. And the keyboard player on here says Andre Pascarelli. Um, definitely don't know who the hell he is, but he provides the keyboards on this album. And it's interesting. It's very interesting, uh, but um, it, it's definitely, it works on this track. It's definitely, it's fast paced. It's definitely got that power metal sound to it, but with the keyboards, it adds something a little different to it. That's something all to Phantom's, uh, you know, own. Uh, then we get to Under the Gun. Um, definitely not bad. Uh, of course, I do have to say that even some of Phantom's sound kind of reminds me of a bit more of a heavier, sort of faster version of Icon self-titled album, in which at times this is definitely like like if Icon decide to play sort of a power metal sound, if they want to you know take their sound the debut and make it a little heavier. Uh, this definitely does end. Of course, there the, the track under the gun is definitely uh, titled after a Icon track, uh, but this is definitely not anywhere similar to that track. It's still good, um, not not too bad, but. It, it is good. Uh, there's still some of that keyboard sound. Um, then we get uh, Punish the Sinners, which is good track. I think one of the sore ones, but still is very good. I think there is still some of that keyboard sound in there, but I think it, it kind of starts over. Say it. it's welcome. It's definitely good. Um, uh, the stand, fine. Um, not too bad. Black Widow. Nah, it's, it's not too bad of a track, it's still it's enjoyable, but it's not really as good. Uh, fuck. Uh, Take Me Down Slow is kind of a... This is probably the most hair metal moment on this album, though. I will have to do a video on hair metal, which is, uh, like, I mean the term. Because again... If anything, this has got a bit of an AOR sort of sound to it on this track a bit. Something also that kind of reminds me a little bit of White Snake, but later White Snake. Like 1987 album, not, you know, 70s, early 80s White Snake when they had that deep purple sound. But there, it's just okay. It's not really all that fucking great of a track. Uh, Dead of Night picks back up. Definitely great, great song. Then we get Turbocharged. Fine. Great way to end the album. Um, is it, is the track, I, uh, you know, just like the title says? Maybe. 
It's not as, uh, it's definitely just a good way to end the album. Uh... So, uh, however, there is a, um, from the 1995 copy, which was released in Japan, there's a bonus track on here. It's only, it's a, a track titled No Evil on My Mind it was definitely recorded during the album and it's actually if anything this is definitely the copy you should get if there's anything I probably would replace it I would probably just get rid of uh, take me down slow uh, in favor of just keeping this track because this is actually a good way to end the album so this is definitely the copy to get of course there's a cult metal classics reissue of it that does end it with this because of on the Japanese copy it's right in the middle around the album but here it's actually the end the track that ends it and be uh, quite honest this is a copy you, you should get if it's on if this copy this pre version is on LP uh, this is definitely the copy you should definitely get because it actually ends the album very nicely because it's actually a good track it's Really, I, I actually do dig this, and it's just a good way to end it. Uh, overall, this is definitely a good album. Um, not really too earth-shattering as well. It's one, for some reason, I kind of enjoyed this one more than the ESP. Yes, I know. But, overall, it's definitely a good album. Nonetheless, it's definitely a pretty enjoyable listen, when it, even if you're... Uh, want to look for some pretty good uh, unknown or uh, or U.S. Pemmer bands that you haven't heard yet and just want to have something that's definitely good to throw on, this is definitely one to throw on. Uh, of course, this band did kind of uh, release two more albums within the 90s, actually, and I definitely haven't heard any th anything from that, uh, uh, the 1991 album, but I know that, that uh, the 1993 album has a much better score on the Metal Archives than for Dead or Alive. So, I guess that should say something. Overall, good album. If you have heard the sound by Phantom, what are your thoughts? If you have any thoughts, you can post your comments down below. And of course, this does feature artwork from Drew Elliott, who did definitely most of the artwork for New Renaissance Records, including bands such as Blood Feast, uh, Necrophagia, and so forth. So, there you have it. It's time to get on to the uh, album for the last album for this day, but not the last album for the month. Which that comes tomorrow. Yes. We're near the we're really near the end.